Ladies and gentlemen, our esteemed guests, students, parents, and our dear MNLU Parivar, a very warm and heartfelt welcome to all of you on this momentous occasion. Today, we stand at a juncture that holds immense significance in the remarkable journey of Maharashtra National Law University, Mumbai. As we come together to celebrate the Ninth Orientation Day, we find ourselves envel enveloped in the sense of anticipation and shared commitment to learning. This day symbolizes not only the beginning of a new academic year, but also a continuation of the legacy of excellence that MNLU Mumbai has consistently upheld. It is a day where fresh faces embark on a path of knowledge, where ideas find fertile ground to flourish, and where aspirations take flight towards new horizons. The journey that brought us to this point has been one, has been one of the dedication, perseverance, and collaboration. Over the years, Seminalu Mumbai has evolved into the hub of intellectual growth, a melting pot for diverse perspectives and sanctuary for those who seek to make difference in the world of law. Each orientation day is a reminder of the progress we have made and the challenges we have overcome and the aspiration that continue to drive us forward. It is with immense pleasure and deep sense of honor that I, Manisha Katyal, stand before you to host the ninth orientation day of Maharashtra National Law University, Mumbai. We are truly honored to have you all join us on this auspicious occasion. A warm welcome to each one of you on this significant day. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome our esteemed chief guest, Professor Dr. V. Nagraj Sir, Vice Chancellor of Tamil Nadu National Law University, Trichy. We are also graced by the presence of our Honorable Vice Chancellor Sir, Professor Dr. Dilip Uke, and our Registrar Sir, Professor Dr. Anil Variat. In the presence of this esteemed gathering, we are about to embark on a deeply symbolic and cherished tradition, the lightning of the lamp ceremony. So without any further ado, I kindly request our chief guest, our vice chancellor sir, and our registrar sir to come forward and illuminate the lamp, infusing the ceremony with the brilliance of their wisdom and leadership. We start our journey by invoking Lord Ganesha and Devi Saraswati to remove all the hindrance and to bring success and wealth. I now invite Athira Menon to present the invocation, invocation that encompasses the blessings of Lord Ganesha, Goddess Saraswati and Goddess Lakshmi and conclude with the prayer of Lord Shiva, the embodiment of auspiciousness.
Thank you, Athira, for such a beautiful and auspicious performance. I request all the esteemed dignitaries to please approach the dais. In this ever-evolving journey of education, we recognize the pivotal role of our esteemed guests. Their experience, insights, and contributions to their respective fields have not only enriched the realm of academia, but have also inspired countless individuals to strive for excellence. Their presence indeed adds immense value to this occasion, and we are privileged to have uh, Sir as the part of our celebration. With that, I request Honorable Vice Chancellor Sir to kindly facilitate our chief guest with the memento and a bouquet. Thank you, sir. Now, moving forward, I am pleased to introduce Professor Dr. Anil Jivaryat, Registrar in Charge of MNLU Mumbai. 
It is my privilege to introduce a uh, luminary whose contributions have left an indeniable mark on the realm of law and education. Professor Dr. Anil Varyat brings with him a remarkable journey of many years in the legal profession, a journey enriched by diverse experience and uh, exceptional accomplishments. His, collabor his collaboration with Professor, uh, Professor Dr. Dilip Uke has propelled MNLU Mumbai, being one of the sought-after NLUs in India. His leadership in multiple research centers, his role as the Vice Chairman of Indian Society of Criminology, and his commitment to education exemplifies his dedication to the field. Sir will grace us with his wisdom and insights in the welcome address and with his extensive experience and profound understanding of the educational landscape, we are certain that his words will set a tone for this remarkable event. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in extending a warm welcome to Professor Dr. Anil Varyat for his welcome address. Thank you, Manisha. Esteemed Chief Guest of the Day, Professor V. Nagaraj Sir, Most Respected Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. Dilip Bukhi Sir, our Head of the Department, Dr. Pradap Singh Salunke, Associate Dean, Dr. Gigi Mohan, all other members of the faculty, staff, and the students, and, the, and of course their parents who have assembled here for this orientation program. A warm welcome to you all to the Maharashtra National Law University Mumbai family. Because of the space constraint, in fact, we have to accommodate the parents in the other room as well as another hall in the th fourth floor. But we are so happy that all of you have assembled here today in the morning. So while welcoming you to this university, I also congratulate each one of you for securing an admission in this university, one of the most sought-after national law universities in India. As you are aware, we are only eight years old, ninth year is going on now. We started our academic uh, endeavors in the year 2015. And within this short span, MNLE Mumbai could make its own mark in the legal education in India. Our aim is to bring this university to one of the most soft after universities across the globe for which we look forward to you and for that mission I welcome you to this campus. You have different advantages in, uh, you know, in taking admission in the MNLU. Coming to MNLU campus itself is a life-changing opportunity for you because you know that we are placed in the economic capital of India, which <coughs> also has a headquarters of almost all the leading corporate entities in India and also in the world. The major law firms are placed in, in, in Mumbai. So you get a lot of exposure, professional exposure, which is highly required for you. Apart from that, the best litigating talents of the country are also from this place. So our vice chancellors are always used to call upon the students to come and take up law as a practicing career, litigation as a career. Because the very purpose of starting national law universities was to bring up the standard of legal profession and the judiciary in India. So unfortunately, we are yet to realize that goal. So we have designed our teaching pedagogy in such a way that our students should fit into the best place in their career. Let it be in the corporate legal or in the litigating uh, 
field or in the support service, maybe in the uh, social service, whatever it is, uh, I call it as a non-conventional legal practice. So our, our alumni, though we are a, a small young organization, our alumni had performed excellence. They are occupying coveted positions in various organizations and they continue to support us. The Alumni Association is one of the backbones of our academy now. Then you get a lot of opportunities for internship. And we have a provision for running internship in the final year and fourth year. Otherwise, in every year, you have two months dedicated for internship. And we also have a very vibrant internship and placement cell. Who could, proudly I can say, who could achieve 90% of placements last year? Then you may ask, what about the 10%? The 10% did not require placement because they, they had their own avenues of practice or otherwise. So I must conclude by saying that 100% of the students who required placement got placement through the placement cell. <laughs> yes. Again, I would like to call, uh, tell that there are a lot of events and activities to supplement your academic journey, which we call as extracurricular and co-curricular activities. Even the two years of COVID where the entire world was sleeping, this university was working. We were shut only for two weeks. Thereafter, selectively we started working and we are the first universities in India not only among NLUs, entire universities, including the conventional, traditional universities, to declare the result of the final year students on 1st June 2020, when it was at the peak of lockdown, we declared our result. And in the month of June itself, many of our students enrolled into the bar. But You know one thing, this is the era of competition. You have to ace the race. An institution can only support you. You have to build your future. You have to be part of all these extracurricular, co-curricular activities, outreach activities. Why I am telling outreach activities? Unlike many other uh, universities, we are socially committed university. We feel, our, our Vice Chancellor has always said that we are a public funded university. So the knowledge and resources what we have should be made available for the use of others who are in, who are need, in need in the society. So we have a lot of outreach activities. We have regular ongoing legal aid clinic every second Saturday of Every second Saturday, we have legal aid clinic in Navi Mumbai working, which provides legal aid and support to the poor and needy, the marginalized section of people. And we have collaborated with many institutions, India and abroad. Most important is that we have collaborated with the local law colleges and we are taking them along with us in the journey of knowledge. That is most important. So you have to build your future, you have to be part of this. And we have so many add-on courses which will empower you when you come up to the, uh, your career, when you start your career, professional career. See, we have ventured into areas where other universities have not ventured. You may be aware of ADR, IPR, all this, everyone do. But we have programs like litigation, lawyering and court <coughs> management law for management. Litigation lawyering is not taught anywhere as a subject. We have diploma in crime investigation. We have diploma in fashion law. We have course on animal rights and animal laws. 
so there are so many programs where you can take part and you can excel yourself so the five years which you spend over here should be the golden period of your life in future you should look backward and see that and say that my golden life in my uh, golden period in my life was the manali mumbai campus of course you should understand that we have limited space we have constraints we are tenants in somebody's campus so being tenant itself is a uh, you know handicapness and we are having hostel nearby hostel also have i know that there are so many problems with the hostels so all our journey our strength was the support of the students so you are away from the home you are not in the protection of your parents we are there to protect you as your parents they have each one of you who are sitting there are our own children our faculty will be with you if you have any problem let it be academic non academic personal emotional anything you can share with them they will be there to guide you we will be there to guide you but there may be some minor discomforts which you have to bear with us we will always be at the uh, uh, will be always be at there to resolve it amicably and it is not it is a journey we together undertake each one in this university right from the vice chancellor to the lowest employee and every student is an equal stakeholder and partner in this institution that is what we preach there is no affection no ill will no discrimination so always we are one soul and one family and one word i have to share with the parents today you have come you entrust your children to us we will take care of them as you take care or better than you take care of them but your responsibility does not end there i request the parents to be constantly interacting with the faculties constantly interacting with their own wards so that they don't get emotionally distressed so the of resident support which the parents should provide when they are in this campus will also be will also strengthen the students in their journey of academics so we will have lot many occasions to interact with this same word with few words i once again welcome to this prestigious institution welcome once again thank you thank you so much sir with great enthusiasm now we now move forward to the highlight of our event a distinguished presence and riches are gathering today it is my distinct privilege to welcome our chief guest of today's function professor dr v nagraj vice chancellor of Tam uh, tamil nadu national law university trichy and it is my honor to introduce sir with an impressive career spanning over 32 years dr nagraj has consistently been a guiding force in the realm of academia a significant portion of his journey 29 years to be precise was dedicated to nurturing the minds at the prestigious national law university bangalore dr nagraj's commitment to education extend beyond the classroom his role as the vice chancellor of two national law universities national law university orissa and national law university jabalpur and as the registrar of national law university bangalore exemplifies his visionary leadership in academia he has chaired critical councils shaping the educational experience for countless students adding to his international exposure dr nagraj researched stints in vanderbilt law school usa and warwick university uk have en enriched his perspective further benefiting those under his guidance his endeavors extend to a practical aspects of legal education evident through his coordination of center for institute of law and ethics in medicine and his charge of legal services clinic at nlsiu we are deeply honored to have you sir amongst us today and please join me to extend a warm welcome to sir as he step forward to share his wisdom with us thank you 
a nice introduction. Good morning to everybody. Uh, Dr. Dilip UK, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Maharashtra National Law University, Mumbai. Uh, Dr. Anil Variat, Registrar, uh, uh, Pr Pratap Singh Saluke, uh, the head of the department, uh, distinguished uh, faculty members, uh, students, parents, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to congratulate all the students who have got into the National Law University, Mumbai, and you got in out of your own efforts and merit. So that's something which has to be uh, congratulated. So please accept my congratulations. Uh, and uh, coming to uh, the whatever the responsibility I have to discharge now, I thought I will keep it uh, light because you have five years of uh, very uh, difficult uh, studies, very difficult studies and um, a lot of work to be done. So I thought I will keep it light. I will start with, uh, it is a common saying, maybe a joke and it is true also. See, father, uh, father one of the fathers is a lawyer, he wanted his son also to study law and become a lawyer. So the son became a lawyer and one day the son took the brief which his father has been conducting for a good number of years to the court. The matter was called and the son, enthusiastic son, he made the submissions and he got the relief also for his client. He was very happy, excited. He came back home and uh, with all the excitement told his father See, Father, this case has been pending for so many years. Today, I made the submissions and I got the relief also for the client. The father scolded him. A useless fellow, this case, out of this case, your education has been financed. It's a money-yielding case and you have disposed it of. So, meaning, the lawyers of those years not the present years, we can't afford it in the present days. Lawyers of those years, uh, once a client comes, uh, they were uh, uh, reluctant to dispose of that uh, particular uh, brief. So as and when the client comes, they used to collect some money. That was what was happening. And uh, recently, you know, Madhya Pradesh uh, High Court passed a circular, passed an order to the subordinate courts, saying you have to dispose all the old cases, cases pending for more than three years, uh, they should be disposed of on priority basis. The subordinate uh, judiciary started uh, doing their job. They were not giving adjournments as uh, sought by the lawyers. Uh, they started disposing of all the old cases. Then the lawyers went on strike. And their demand was, uh, if all the old cases are disposed of, what will happen to our practice? So uh, there was an agitation and the demand was to withdraw the circular. Anyhow, the High Court has been very uh, rather, uh, affirmative and strong on that. They said, uh, come what may, we will not withdraw that uh, circular. So that has been true even nowadays also. That's where uh, uh, Justice M. N. Venkatachalaya, former Chief Justice of India, in one of his speeches he said, the best of law is yet to come. So what is that best of law is yet to come? I think what he meant was uh, the timely disposal of cases is not happening. Timely and quick disposal of cases are not happening. Uh, that has to happen uh, sooner or later. So now <coughs> we are at a stage where litigation for whatever the reasons, it keeps pending for <coughs> quite a long period of time. Some cases, I am told, are pending for the past 40 years, 50 years also, especially the original suits, property disputes. They are spending for uh, 40 years, 50 years. The economy is liberalized in 1991. Uh, we have international investment coming in. 
the domestic investment also is coming in uh, the country is um, progressing at a great speed I think GDP growth is somewhere around six and a half percent and that is how the country is going growing economic activities are growing the judiciary cannot be so relaxed it can't be so relaxed it has to uh, be fair enough quick enough to dispose of the cases uh, as early as uh, possible we had the national litigation policy of 2011 2011 where uh, the national litigation policy government of india report says at that time there was more than three and a half crores uh, cases pending in various courts in the country three and a half crores and uh, average life of litigation they have mentioned it as uh, 15 years that's they are talking only about the courts the high court I mean the subordinate courts high court and the supreme court in addition to that uh, you have the tribunals uh, almost uh, tribunals for everything including the real estate consumer protection labor matters service matters uh, tax matters what not anything you talk of there is a tribunal green tribunal then we have the adjudic I mean the administrative authorities performing uh, judicial functions like a collector sub collector uh, then you have the labor department officers so there also there are the cases pending which has not been assessed as to what is the amount of cases pending there so conservatively we can take that also as 3.5 crores in 2011 in 2011 when they gave the litigation policy they thought that they will be able to bring down the age of litigation from 15 years to three years that was the vision of the new education policy uh, new litigation policy I mean. but uh, in 2020 when they are uh, re-looking into that uh, it has not uh, improved uh, much it has not improved much I say the litigation period continues to be 15 years or uh, somewhere around that and the number of pending litigations they expected will going to come down almost uh, to a very negligible level but instead uh, the now pending litigation has increased now the pending litigation one estimate the report is said to come one estimate it is five and a half crores another estimate it is six crores even if we keep it as five and a half crores that is again mainstream judiciary that means you have minimum of around 11 crore uh, litigants one case minimum two people will be there uh, one petitioner another respondent so that is the level of pendency and equal number of pendency you can expect even with the administrative authorities uh, adjudicating so you have around 24 25 crore uh, litigants litigating in the courts and the other uh, dispute resolution fora in addition to this you have arbitration going on mediations going on uh, what not all sorts of uh, dispute resolution in fact in two cases the supreme court has uh, mentioned if the dispute resolution is not uh, updated and it is not up to the expectations of the people then the underworld will going to take over the dispute resolution the police in uniform will start resolving the disputes so that's where the legal profession has to be upgraded updated and it has to be quick enough to respond to the problems of the people and especially in the economy where the, the economic activity is so uh, fast uh, they can't uh, the business uh, disputes cannot wait for 15 years 20 years it's okay uh, long back uh, when the property disputes or matrimonial disputes they were spending for that many years now business disputes they want quick uh, resolution of disputes companies are coming up companies are being winded up that itself is a big uh, uh, transactional lawyering com companies coming up companies winding up you have transaction again litigation in that so uh, the functioning of the judiciary has to be updated and that's where legal education will going to play a great uh, role great role so there was a time in the history of legal education where uh, everybody thought legal education is the last resort 
so after plus 2 you join either medicine engineering thing like that if you don't get any of those things join a degree course and after the degree course again if you don't get anything do an llb again you don't get any job become a lawyer this is the history of legal education very brief so uh, those people who became lawyers uh, after not getting into engineering medicine or all india services those lawyers were adjudicating the disputes of lawyers engineers uh, all india service officers uh, everyone so lawyers uh, that's how they were uh, you know socially responsible for all these uh, cases being disposed of maybe that is the situation where uh, judiciary has lagged behind lagged behind to correct that situation the concept of national law school has come up the first to start for the bangalore national law school and that also it was in the wings for about um, 14 years then it was started off so professor madhav menon the founding director did a great job in uh, giving a momentum to that uh, university setting a vision for legal education so after that uh, it has been successful and uh, the law commission of india in 2001 if i am right uh, justice jagannath uh, rao uh, was the chairman of the commission he wrote that uh, every state must have at least one national law school type of institution so now we have national law school type of institutions not only uh, one for a state uh, maharashtra has three madhya pradesh has two i think uttar pradesh will going to have again two so they are going to have two or three national law schools in each uh, state even that is doesn't seem to be adequate as uh, the number of lawyers required in the present day society is quite uh, huge the services are required especially transactional lawyering even litigation continues to be the same way what it is in addition to the transaction lawyering has become a uh, good uh, uh, rather great great work where the commercial transactions are made and for making the commercial transactions lawyers are very important so gone are those days when again the joke you know when the students are there teachers used to be absent and teachers were there students used to be absent when both of them were present they used to getting get into an understanding they will not have the class so that was the uh, time in the again in the history of legal education now those things have gone bar council of india has said uh, 70% attendance uh, minimum 60 hours of teaching for four credit course so and you need to have a certificate that you have minimum 78 70% attendance otherwise there will be no registration of uh, uh, in the bar council of uh, india our state bar councils so we need to have the required attendance and classes are very seriously held uh, many of many of the not only not only national law schools even other law schools private law schools they are becoming residential law schools where the expectation of attendance is uh, saying more than 90% so there is no question of teachers giving the excuse uh, students giving the excuse and jointly taking a Uh, resolution that uh, there will be no class those things are over so legal education is uh, uh, come to be quite serious now <coughs> entrance to the national law schools is uh, common law admission test uh, which is quite difficult i have seen the papers uh, uh, there was a time when i was also associated with uh, conducting of examinations uh, it is quite tough and you have come through that uh, tough examination having come through that tough examination now you will have to not only learn the uh, knowledge of law but uh, translating the knowledge of law into action what do you call problem solving so people come to you with uh, problems whether you are working with a legal services clinic or when you graduate and become a lawyer either a transaction lawyer or a litigating lawyer or uh, into arbitration or into mediation any of those aspects of dispute resolution uh, you have the clients coming to you with a problem so you should know how to apply the law to that problem and find a solution effective solution quickly that is what is the requirement of the day so in the law schools you will going to now learn the skills of lawyering and the subject of uh, knowledge of law so subject knowledge of law i can say maybe about 50% and skills of lawyering at court etiquettes will have to be another 50% 
a proper blending of these two things is what is going to see that uh, you are doing justice to the career you have chosen that is uh, legal profession and uh, legal profession is something wherein you know you are uh, helping the economy develop you are helping the society develop and you are uh, helping individuals with problems okay problems are part of life at least quickly resolving those problems and uh, looking forward in life so when you look at the skills of lawyering which you will going to be uh, emphasizing in the education and national law schools all of them emphasize on skills of lawyering registrar has uh, very eloquently put across uh, what the mumbai national law university is doing to inculcate skills in the students and uh, you have the strategic advantage well connected uh, place mumbai very well connected place and this is the economic capital of the country all the law firms are situated here you have judiciary which is doing very well so whatever the exposure you get uh, through your internship uh, internship which is compulsory now is going to give you a great exposure in addition to that exposure you see in real life uh, uh, what i feel is uh, national law schools the litigation lawyering which the registrar was mentioning will put you through uh, the conducting of a trial conducting of a trial when a case comes at the trial court maybe munsif courts or the district judges courts how are you going to draft the pleadings for that how are you, first thing is how are you going to conduct the client uh, interviewing and when you conduct the client interviewing how are you going to infuse some confidence into the mind of the client and some sort of a counseling wherein the client can go with the feeling that the client is in the safe hands of the lawyer the client has chosen so client interviewing counseling it starts with that then depending on upon whether it has to go for mediation or it has to go for uh, adjudication you will decide and if it has to go for adjudication you need a different set of uh, skills litigation skills wherein you will have to draft the pleadings uh, then conduct the trial examination in chief cross examination and cross examination is a really a art and many lawyers say that cross examination skills uh, it is not as good as it used to be used to be so that's very good for uh, rather very important for what you call as a uh, lawyering it's like you know cross examination is like uh, um, what is this um, thing you know the husband and wife they had a quarrel and they came to the court in the cross examination the lawyer wife's lawyer asked the husband it is about domestic violence the lawyer asked the husband i suggest to you that you stop beating your wife from 1st august 2023 so if the answer he can give is only yes or no he can't speak much in cross examination if he says yes before that he was beating if he says no even now he continues to beat that's the uh, maybe some sort of an extremity that is how the cross examination has to be if a cross examination is conducted in that way how to save that uh, client how to save that husband then re examination has to be done to get the clarification now that's a question where yes or no both the answers will going to put the client in trouble so question should not be like that question has to be asked in a different way so uh, the that husband will have to be asked to clarify by the lawyer in the reexamination so that's how the skills of lawyering is uh, especially cross examination it's a great art and that is what uh, is being emphasized in the law schools now through the trial advocacy then you have the appellate advocacy high court uh, supreme court uh, uh any litigation once a client comes to you that one case easily gets converted into three cases trial court level very easily gets converted into three it may be converted to four also in between you have so many interim applications one is at the trial court then appeal to the high court single bench appeal to the division bench of the high court then appeal to the supreme court if nothing is there slp to the supreme court so that's how one case gets converted into four cases that means uh, you have plenty of work on hand in la litigation lawyering so many people they go to uh, law firms because the initially it is very attractive initially it is attractive you get a 
hefty salary. So everybody would like to go to the law firm. And um, all the law firms, almost all the law firms, they do transactional lawyering only. When it comes to litigation, few law firms do that litigation. That too, they engage uh, outside advocates. Ad uh, they engage the advocates, senior advocates, they engage. So you don't have that uh, challenge of uh, uh, the challenge, challenging experience of your profession. If you want to really enjoy the profession, it is litigation. It is litigation and I mentioned to you about the cross-examination, how the questions will going to come. And the knowledge is quite vast when you are doing uh, litigation. You have to have the knowledge of law, you have to have the knowledge of the skills of lawyering, how to uh, keep the judge in good humor so that you get the relief in your favor, and the social milieu in which the disputes come up, the society in which we are living. All these things will have to be there, that's, that's the reason why lawyering is called as a noble profession. Noble profession, as the education that goes into it is quite uh, deep. So, put in your efforts uh, uh, to these things and uh, you have competitions also. Litigation, lawyering, competitions you have, wherein you uh, test to yourself how you have performed. You need not have to feel bad if you lose, lose, but you are getting the opportunity of testing yourself how you have fared and how your uh, others, uh, classmates or seniors have fared. And when you go to competitions in other universities, you can see other universities, uh, other law colleges, how they have performed. So even if you are not winning, losing, that's a part of uh, life. Sometimes we win, sometimes we lose. But what you learn there is exposure. Exposure to so many people with their uh, skills, with their etiquettes. So you will have the opportunity of inculcating the best from all those people and improving your own personality. So litigation, uh, litigation competitions, then moot court competitions uh, plenty. There was a time when moot courts were held like uh, debates. Uh, court means is arguing without listening. So without listening, they are arguing. So from there, that uh, a sort of a debate-like situation, it has come to such a professional way of conducting moot courts now. Uh, they are uh, conducted in, in such a way even court halls are not like that. Uh, proceedings in the court, regular court, may not be like that. So that is the extent to which the professionalism has come in the moot courts. You have the uh, domestic, uh, that is the national level moots. Uh, you have international moots. Uh, so you can see not only the performance of lawyers in the Indian scenario, you can see the performance of I mean, the law graduates uh, in the other countries. And it's Jessop, uh, uh, Stetson, all those uh, moot courts, if you see, there will be 30, 40 teams con competing. So 30, 40 countries will be competing there. You can see their performance. Even client interviewing, counseling, you have international competition. Mediation, you have international competition. Arbitration, you have international competition. So through these competitions, uh, you inculcate the best, uh, not only from your peers, uh, but uh, from the fellow uh, law students from various countries. So that is the opportunity the legal education is providing today, and especially the uh, national law universities. As uh, uh, national law universities is uh, set up with a clear vision to make uh, you competent uh, law graduates, uh, socially relevant law graduates. So they are uh, into different methods of uh, teaching. So in addition to litigation, of course, uh, transactional lawyering already I mentioned the drafting has to be very good. Uh, that's what you will learn in your uh, internship. How do you do the drafting? To so support that internship, uh, even the university teaches uh, how to draft the uh, notice, right from notice, uh, so summons. Then the, you have the contracts being drafted. Drafting is a very big uh, business today. Most of the companies, when they enter into just employment contract to a a business contract, they want the contract to be uh, drafted by a lawyer. Earlier, the personal department used to do that. Now the lawyers are doing it. So that's a big uh, business. Then uh, uh, th that's how the chamber practice is quite uh, 
developed in the country and you have the best law firms in Bombay. So that's another uh, avenue for you as uh, lawyers, those who think that uh, litigation is difficult or they don't want litigation for whatever the reasons. They can think of uh, law firms as an employ employment opportunity. Now arbitration is growing in a big way because uh, they want quick resolution of disputes and resolution of disputes by uh, specialists, not the generalist judges, they want it by specialists who are uh, well versed in that particular area of uh, law. So arbitration is going very fast, uh, domestic arbitration to international commercial arbitration, uh, it's going, uh, growing very fast. Now even disputes worth uh, 3 lakhs, 4 lakhs also come to arbitration and uh, thousands of crores disputes also come to arbitration. So that itself is a uh, specialized area, huge area for you to uh, develop your uh, career. Then in between uh, you have the mediation. Uh, the way things are uh, going on, uh, we, may not, we may not be surprised if mediation is going to be the anchoring uh, uh, means of dispute resolution in the country and abroad. Mediation, it uh, uh, is a facilitated negotiation, assisted negotiation, where they try to resolve the disputes in a win-win situation, so that uh, there is no animosity between the parties left out. So dispute is resolved, parties also go satisfactorily. To th that extent, society will be a peaceful society. So that is the emphasis. Uh, and if mediation picks up the way it is intended to be, uh, mediation will going to become a big uh, way of resolving disputes as nobody wants to uh, what they say wash their dirty linen in the public they don't want to come to the court and uh, everybody witness their problem being resolved instead they want to decently resolve their dispute in private uh, through mediation process so that's how mediation is a very good uh, method uh, of dispute resolution it has to evolve and uh, somehow i have a feeling that uh, it is going to evolve evolve very strongly and it is said that women are very good in mediation and negotiation also. So for women candidates here, litigation if you think it is uh, uh, quite demanding, you can consider mediation, you can consider negotiation. It is a big business, it's a big business now. So that's how the uh, profession has uh, many things to give today and only we the law professionals will have to be prepared to take it and to take that you have to prepare yourself uh, properly using the five years of stay in the law university and coming to a law university it has a distinct advantage advantages compared to the other law, law schools or law colleges because studying in a law university that way national law university will keep you at least five to six years ahead of others that is the exposure you get in national law schools. So if a person graduating from any other college has just started the practice and if you start the practice, uh, you can take it that you are uh, four to five years ahead of that particular person. That is the confidence uh, that you get by the exposures that are given to you in the national law universities. So make use of all these facilities, uh, uh, be competent lawyers uh, and uh, relevant to the society and uh, take the profession to greater heights. Uh, that's it and uh, wish you all the best again. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much, sir. As we continue our program, we are honored to present the next segment, the presidential address by a distinguished leader who has played a main role in shaping our institution. It is with great respect and admiration that I introduce Professor Dr. Dilip Uke, Vice Chancellor of Maharashtra National Law University, Mumbai. His leadership, vision and dedication have been instrumental in guiding our university towards excellence. Prior to this, his journey was marked by distinguished roles serving as a pro-Vice Chancellor and acting Vice Chancellor of SRTM University, Nandir, Maharashtra and as the professor and head of the department at Department of Law, Pune University. His influence resonates nationally with his presence on significant bodies like UGC, NAC, UPSC, and various other state public service commissions. 
He is even the nominated member of UGC MHRD panel of experts for institutions of eminence. Internationally, uh, internationally, Sir is associated with the New South Wales University, Sydney, Australia, and has delivered insightful talks at conferences worldwide. His work in jurisprudence, constitutional law, and administrative law, and many other uh, subjects is renowned and culti and Cumula uh, culminating in the Best Academician Law Award by the Indian National Bar Association in 2019. Please join me in welcoming our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Sir, to deliver the Presidential Address. Chief Guest of today's program, my colleague, Professor V. Nagaraj, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Tamil Nadu National University, Trichy, our Registrar, Dr. Anil Variyat, Head of the Department, Dr. Pratap Singh Salunke, Associate Dean, Dr. Jiji Mohan, all faculty members, parents who are present over here, administrative or non-teaching staff of Eminently Mumbai and dear student friends. A uh, very good morning to all of you. At the outset, uh, I too congratulate you as well as your parents and uh, welcome you today in this uh, prestigious uh, Maharashtra National University, Mumbai. <coughs> Today is the day which is like uh, your Gruha Pravesh. At least for five years, why I say at least, why? Because if you decide to do masters, then one more year. And if you further decide to go for doctoral studies, and if selected, few more years will be added. That's the reason I said at least for five years, nothing else. We don't want to detain you or retain you as such. Professor Nagaraj spoke at length. Before that, our Rajsar did mention certain things and both of them did not leave anything for me to speak much. Nevertheless, as a head of the family, it is my bounden duty to interact with you, to speak with you. As you are aware that uh, after appearing in CLAT, which was held in the month of December, wherein uh, near about 70,000 plus candidates appeared in the examination, putting all the national law universities together, the number to be admitted, number of students which are to be admitted goes nearby 2,500 to 3,000 at the most, including all, all the national universities. It means that uh, at least 65 to 67,000 candidates, prospective students could not get admission in any of the national universities. That speaks volume about your own caliber, your own competency, and your own hard work. You are the chosen ones amongst all that, all those 70,000 or whatever the number it was, for which not only you, your parents, you have studied, definitely you must have studied, you might have joined some coaching classes as well for preparation of. But your parents who have supported you for this journey to be embarked upon, to be undertaken for at least further five years period, they also deserves a lot of appreciation and you owe so much to your parents at first. 
when you chose this field of legal education it is not by an accident you are not accidental law student certainly that it was your own conscious decision not only influenced by your friends or parents but you on your own must have decided that yes you want to pursue law with whatever the objects with whatever the goals you might have thought of might have set for further to be achieved after the completion of your graduate study and that's why you have been selected and you have been admitted and you are here dear friends uh, maharashtra national university as it was pointed out it is not that old compared with other national universities it is just 8 year olds and now we have entered in our 9th year we are in a rented premises hostel are also in a rented premises it is a matter of information which is to be shared with all of you that just a month or so before the university was accorded the land by the government of maharashtra and uh, the work for building a campus is underway going on this is your just beginning and i'm sure i won't say uh, confident i'm sure that when you enter in your third year at the most fourth year but certainly when you pass out you will pass out from your our own campus <laughs> that tag of uh, rented confidently i can say should be and would be removed that much i won't say assurance it is a word about which my colleagues are aware about as a, a noted jurist uh, justice homes i don't want to tax your minds with legal jargons and philosophy much on very first day so that you will take so much burden upon you no he said that he had observed which you will come to know in the process that uh, life of law is not logic but it is an experience life of law is not logic but it is an experience in a similar way i would say legal education life of legal education it is not logic what you think but it is an experience and that experience you are here to take that experience to learn that experience and to live with that experience in these uh, last 8 years the university maharashtra national university mumbai has carved its niche has earned its name and place amongst all these total till now 24 national universities across the country i do not wish to mention that uh, where do we stand what is the ranking of the university we don't want to be a judge in your own cause when you study in future administrative law you learn that no one shall be a judge in his own cause yet uh, in last 8 years the kind of a progress which has been made kind of achievements which are there kind of programs and activities which are there people started not only taking note but rather holding the university at higher pedestal professor nagraj colleague professor vijay kumar a former vice chancellor of uh, dr ambedkar law university tamil nadu as well as uh, recently demoted the office 
from National University of Institute Bhopal, who is the founding vice chancellor, uh, founding faculty member of NLS Bangalore. From this platform, on such a day, on orientation day only, when he was invited, if my colleagues remember, he did say that Maharashtra National University Mumbai has not only has a potential, but the great enthusiasm and which will surpass even a Bangalore National University, Bangalore. <laughs> Dear friends, uh, we not only offer BA, LLB honors uh, courses, now we have two sections, you are aware about that. Similarly, regular one-year LLM course is there and I believe that LLM students are also here. But apart from these two regular courses, we have plenty of other courses. Few of them were mentioned by our registrar. Maharashtra National University Mumbai offers a unique course and Maharashtra National University Mumbai is the only university not only in India, in whole South Asia which offers that course, a master's program, MA in mediation and conflict resolution, which was started from 2020. So we have MA program in mediation and conflict resolution. Then another LLM, earlier it was LLM professional for working professionals, either advocates or judges, or whosoever have had done their law. Now it has been changed to executive program. So that is the second LLM. The third LLM is in association with SEBI, you might have heard the name, SEBI. SEBI's Institute, NISM, National Institute of Security Markets. LLM in Investment and Security Laws, exclusively. That course is being conducted in NISM campus. That is the third LLM. And there is a fourth one, fourth LLM, which is in association with Bombay Stock Exchange in corporate insolvency. So these are the additional courses. In addition to these, we have near about 10 diplomas from this year also. We are launching two more diplomas. One is in sustainable development, climate change and environment. Other one is public health and law. Few of the diplomas which were pointed out by the registrar. And in addition to all these things, we have PAD also, the third batch was admitted this year itself. Since LLM students are here, for their information and if they wish to, they can, jo they can join any of these 10 diplomas since they have done their graduation. Because all these diplomas, diploma in arbitration, diploma in arbitration and mediation, diploma in IPR, PG diploma in IPR, there are several such diplomas which are available even for our own students. Own students means only postgraduate students because being PG diploma, it requires the graduation in any of the subjects. So it is open for LLM students to opt for and one can do degree and diploma simultaneously together. There is no such bar. Dear friends, uh, we had uh, initially only six centers. Now we have almost 20 centers of research. A center of research in arbitration, center of research in mediation, center of research in criminal justice, then IPR, then air and space law, and now even we are going to have in health law, public health law as well. Depending upon your own interest, upon your own choice, you can join as a member of any of these centers to pursue your research interest further. Whatever your interests are, you can 
find out that list of centers as well as coordinators which are there associated with so you can take the advantage of these centers you can take the advantage particularly LLM students of these diploma programs to add into your own knowledge as well as skills no doubt we have a dedicated staff teaching as well as non teaching both you will study all those laws acts legislations including the constitution this is not the time to impress upon that in what manner in what way you need to study those skills you will learn with the passage of time however at the same point i must add that law is not there only in books law is not there only in act law is not there only in constitution law is there beyond this beyond the statute beyond the act beyond the constitution you need to find out you need to locate that law and that's what rather life of law is not logic but it is an experience one may wonder where it could be located where it could be trust dear friends with the passage of time you learn all those tricks tricks and techniques that uh, law is not only whatever is enacted by the parliament or the state legislature or the constitution which is there which is the supreme law of the land but whatever the highest court of the land that is supreme court interprets decide about provision of either of the constitution or of any act or a statute that is the real law living law it is not the provision of the constitution which will be binding it is not the provision of any act which will be binding but rather the way and the manner in which it might be interpreted by the highest court of the land that would be the binding law hence why i am referring to this i am referring to this with this intention that when you read books at the same time you will read you must read even the decisions also particularly decisions of the highest court of the land along with the high court's decisions obviously library is there even online resources are there you will make use of those resources you read standard textbooks but in addition to this as i have said that what is more important is the decisions delivered by the highest court of the land that is supreme court of india they are more important and when you refer to and when you rely upon those decisions it is not only head notes you will come across with that it is not what was held by the court by the supreme court or by the high court but the kind of arguments which have been advanced by the both the parties lawyers and then responses of the judges to those arguments and ultimately the conclusion the binding one go deep into that this five years period as it was pointed out is the golden period of your career of your life your parents your guardians have seen the dream to see you in your life at some place it is your not only duty it is your dharma to fulfill the dreams of your parents as well as your guardians how one can do that how one can achieve that you have to have the passion for that just when we started we did say that you are the chosen one amongst those 70000 imagine there are 65 67000 candidates students are left out from this process how fortunate you are how lucky you are but unless we realize that unless we understand that and mere realization is not enough mere understanding is not enough one has to act 
one has to discharge his or her own duty not for oneself only for your family for your parents and for that what you need you need the passion for your study as it was also mentioned that university provides several such opportunities beyond the classrooms there are several projects several activities several programs several competitions which are being organized conducted by the university you must participate in most of them enthousi with enthusiasm since this is the precious time five years time five years period is a precious time it's a valuable time once time passes it never comes back if you lose your money you can regain your money you can work hard and you can regain your money but once time passes can you bring yesterday can you bring a one hour before no that time is over that moment is over try to understand this try to understand the value of time and for which what is needed that it needs 3 days i did say i do say to our own students recently at nism campus on such occasion those three d's you need to adhere to and those three d's are three dimension three d's are first is your discipline go to the class at right point of time merely attending a lecture merely merely attending class is not enough physical attendance would be there what about your mental while sitting in a class or now also while sitting over here if someone is thinking about the lunch someone is thinking about some other thing how my hostel would be when i shall return unless and until there is a attention it is not your attendance only it is not your attendance only it is your attention in a class which will give you which will provide you not only knowledge not only information not only knowledge the complete understanding you must engross with that and that is like your meditation listening to try to paying as much as possible attention to whatever is being said whatever is being taught that is very very crucial that's why discipline doesn't mean only not to trouble anybody but there are various components various dimensions of discipline of course other dimensions are that no doubt discipline also means that you shall not indulge in any kind of unethical illegal immoral things that's what rather the discipline is it shall be the way of life so first is the discipline out of those three d's first d is your discipline <coughs> second d is your dedication unless you dedicate to the cause unless you dedicate for the object for which you are here unless you dedicate yourself for the reason for which your parents have sent here do you know some of your parents some of the parents they are also listening they are also watching from adjoining room as well as from fourth floor how much hard work how much pains they must have taken to see this day for you to be here hence in view of this unless you dedicate to that cause that yes my parents took so much hard work my parents took so much so pain invested so much so money and they will invest in future as well till time i stand on my own feet i must dedicate 
to myself to the cause to the reason for which i am here so discipline and then dedication that is second d and third one is determination you must be determined yes i want to excel i want to do better unless you are determined that determination with the full confidence not over confidence unless you are determined to excel unless you are unless you are determined to do better better and better today if you are here not only in terms of marks in terms of knowledge not only in terms of marks but in terms of knowledge in terms of your character in terms of your behavior your conduct yes i want to be like this i want to do this do this means not negative not violence a positive one ethical one legal one that's why you have to be determined that yes i want to excel in my life not only for me not only for my family not only for the university where you are now but for the whole country for the whole society so that kind of a determination you have to have unless that kind of determination you possess then otherwise it would be difficult for you to excel so these three d's are necessary are essential to be uh, successful not in the examination in the examination of your life having said that these three d's are the foundation for the success you must adhere to these three d's your discipline your dedication and your determination but at the same time i do say i did say on record and as a head of the family it is my duty to point out that follow these three d's but don't follow other two d's and other two d's are drinks and drugs one might say that it is our right to privacy <laughs> right to privacy is at your home not here <coughs> because if you indulge in these two drinks and drugs other 2d will come that is damage and destruction that will damage your career that will damage your reputation and it will destroy your career it will destroy your life because in today's whole day the faculty members will interact you hostels uh, disciplinary rules will be pointed out to you and they may be they will be circulated to you also you can go through those rules your parents are here watching your parents are here who are listening to i hope i can only hope that uh, whenever parents in future want to meet me they shall meet me only to talk about your progress they shall not come to me to pardon you if you are punished including throwing out from the hostel or sometime even throwing out from the course completely dear friends please take this seriously this is not only a note of caution but it is a fiat it is a writ that please adhere to disciplinary rules of the institution when time comes when something goes wrong and when after inquiry punishment is inflicted punishment is imposed 
Sometimes we don't inform even our parents also. When they come to know, they try to approach, they approach, they come, they plead. That day should not come. That moment should not come. Today, it is really a auspicious day, happy day. I could see all the faces smiling today. I could see that innocence reflecting on everybody's face. These faces are today are really innocent. Today is the 5th August 2023. Faces are really innocent. Faces are really happy. We wish and we want that uh, this innocence, this smile, this peace and satisfaction which is there in each one of you shall continue not only for five years, forever in your life. I said auspicious, why? Because as you know, in the beginning of the program, one of our staff uh, presented the Bharatanatyam maybe? Bharatanatyam. Because I am very poor about songs and dance. That was a prayer. It was not a dance. It was a prayer. And prayer about whom? Prayer, prayer for what? Whom it was a prayer? Whom it was prayed? On your behalf. Not for us. For you and on your behalf. On behalf of all of us. You know, when you visit a temple, it is not that each one can go. Pujari, a priest, performs the puja on behalf of all. Is it? So likewise, she was a pujari here, performing puja on, a, on behalf of all of us. Firstly, it was a Ganesha. Then Goddess Saraswati. Then Goddess Lakshmi. And then Shiva. Is it? No, no religiosity is attached or associated with this. With all the responsibility, we can say, Ganesha is a symbol, a deity of auspiciousness. Ganesha is a symbol, a deity of knowledge. And not only knowledge, a pure knowledge, a wisdom. Wisdom is somewhat different than the knowledge. Wisdom which provides you the discretion, power of discretion, whether to act bad or whether to act good. Whether to be arrogant or whether to be peaceful. That's why. Having prayed that, I think that prayer has been listened by all the four. Lord Ganesha may bestow that knowledge, that wisdom, that purity. Lord Ganesha is also a symbol of purity. All those qualities of Ganesha may come, you may imbibe all those qualities of Ganesha. Otherwise you celebrate, all of us celebrate the Ganesh Puja, Ganesh Chaturthi for 10 days. But we only worship without understanding Ganesha symbolizes what or Ganesha provides for what. So that is one I hope and believe and pray again that she did that prayer on behalf of all of us, on behalf of all of you. And really Lord Ganesha will bless you with that knowledge, power of knowledge, power of wisdom, power of purity and wisdom brings you, bestows upon you the power of discretion to distinguish bad from evil, good from bad as such, ethical from unethical. Then Goddess Saraswati, other one was Goddess Saraswati. We know that Goddess Saraswati is a symbol of knowledge. Let Goddess Saraswati bless all of you to provide you a good knowledge and you can excel in your study, you can excel in your life, you can excel future in your future career. When Goddess Saraswati is pleased along with Lord Ganesha, 
definitely Lakshmi comes. And Lakshmi doesn't mean only money. We should not be, we should not misunderstand that. Lakshmi doesn't mean money. Lakshmi doesn't symbolize only a property, a wealth. But at the same time, Lakshmi symbolizes a kind of a satisfaction. Are we satisfied? Are we run madly after something? <coughs> Today I have a bike, tomorrow four-wheeler, then thereafter advanced version. Of course one can have. But there should not be madras. That, uh, thank you. Lakshmi blesses the satisfaction. That satisfaction one has to have. Who has scored maximum mark number one? I will see to it that you know how he or she gets those many marks. How he, she or he or she can stand first, then indulge in some kind of unethical illegal practices. No. At the same time, Lakshmi also brings a kind of a human dharma, humanity in all. We are human beings. But being the human beings, we it's a matter of introspection. That do we behave, do we conduct as a human being or sometimes we act and behave like animal or sometimes worse than an animal. We need to introspect. How do we behave? What do I say? How do what do I speak? What do I do? Do I trouble? Do I torture? Do I slap? Do I stab? Do I indulge in violence? These are not the qualities of human being. These are, these are the quality. Barking is the quality of a dog, not of a man, not of a human being. Yet, human being barks. Bite is not the quality of human being, it is the quality of a snake. Still, human being bites. Kill, to kill is not the quality of human being, it is the quality of tiger, lion. Yet, human being kills human being. Why it happens? It happens, why? Because that human dharma, manav dharma, is reduced. And that's why. I do understand that uh, this might sound a philosophical one, but it has a practical, pragmatic connotation and it is a harsh, naked reality of real life. This might sound as a preaching, but unless we realize this, unless we follow this, till then, we can't be in real terms human being. That's why. And then ultimately what happens? Shiva comes into play. And Shiva not only blesses, Shiva also destroys. Pray Shiva to destroy what? Destroy negativity in us. Destroy unethical, immoral things which are there in us. Instability in us. Then only that prayer would be meaningful. When I say this, as I have said, that this is not only for the sake of preaching, it has a pragmatic connotations. Of course, we understand that despite of saying all these things, there could be some other instances in future wherein we need to constitute the committees to inquire, investigate, inflict punishment, impose punishments, then tears, crying, everything would come. But as I said that this is perhaps the first time in the history of Maharashtra National University that we started the orientation program with a, such an auspicious prayer. We are hopeful that uh, that prayer would be really useful for all of us. Dear friends, I am conscious enough, I do say, I did say that uh, we don't know our future. We can't bring back the past. Similarly, we don't know our future. Do we know, do you know what you would be after te five years or ten years? No. Hence, 
I am conscious enough that uh, I am addressing not only newly admitted students, but I might be addressing future Chief Justices, future Justice Chandrachoods, future Justice Nagaratnas, because there should not be a gender bias. Future Justice Nagaratnas, future Professor Nagaraz, why not? Future Jatmalanis, Sibbals, Singhvis, who knows? Or Ammanis also. Can't say, can't rule out. But that is possible, that would be possible. Have a dream. See the dream with your naked eyes, open eyes. Not in the night. And pursue that dream. Only watching a dream is not enough. Chase that dream. See the dream, watch the dream in open eye, with open eyes and chase that dream with your determination, with your dedication, with your discipline. And then you can realize that dream unless you adhere to those three Ds. I hope that uh, these words will play some kind of a guidance, if at all convinced to, for shaping your career as a student as well as shaping your career in future life in whatever way you want to pursue either the practice we want maximum students to go into the litigation but yes ultimately it is freedom of choice which is available to each one of you with this i wish you all the best once again congratulate you i congratulate your parents and uh, as a guardian as a head of the family, I would say one thing that uh, to your parents, you are leaving your children here. We will take care of your children hereafter. As a guardian, as a parent, as you to look after and sometime you used to punish them. Give us that authority, otherwise legally that authority is with us. But give us that authority legal as well as moral authority to make them realize and understand that for what they are here with these words once again i congratulate you and give a word to your parents that they will be really disciplined soldiers of maharashtra national university mumbai for at least five years period in future congratulations all the best thank you so much Thank you so much, sir. It is now my distinct honor to welcome a key figure in our institution, Professor Dr. Pratap Singh Salunke, head of the department at MNLU Mumbai, to deliver the word of thanks. Dr. Salunke's commitment to our university and his role in orchestrating this remarkable event cannot be overstated. His dedication and meticulous planning have ensured that today's uh, proceedings have been resounding success. So without further ado, I invite Dr. Pratap Singh Salunke to the stage to express our collective gratitude. <coughs> Professor Dr. V. Nagraj, sir, Vice Chancellor Tamil Nadu National Law University, our own Vice Chancellor, sir, Professor Dr. Dilip Puke, sir, our Registrar, sir, Dr. Anil Variyat, sir, all other faculty members, administrative staff, students, parents, and friends. Let me start with a story. There was a Gurukul, and it was a departing day because education was over. And on that day, Guru offered every student one very unique gift. That gift was containing one magnetic compass and in that magnetic compass, there was a mirror which was planted in that magnetic compass. Everyone was so much curious to know from Guru that magnetic compass, we can understand that it will help us for getting a right direction in a life. But what is the purpose of having that mirror adjacent to that magnetic compass? Then Guru replied that whenever 
there will be a moment in your life of deviation from a right direction then this magnetic compass will help you to understand that you are deviating from a right direction and in what proportion in what degree but it is very important to know who is deviated from the right direction that you will come to know when you will see in the mirror that is you so self realization actualization i hope that this orientation program is to bring and to imbibe such values because just education is not important because it is very well said that knowledge comes but wisdom lingers and that's why to imbibe that wisdom this program which was organized and definitely it will be successful because of space constraints uh, parents they are watching you and this program from a distance i think it is a symbolic as well because till the time of your 12th and your graduation they were and you were under a close monitoring now that distance will be there they will be keeping eye on you but there will be distance so this is a starting point so this exercise will be the starting point i am really thankful to our chief guest for today's orientation day professor dr v nagraj sir because his enlightenment in this orientation program that will be remembered by the students throughout their life and the wisdom which he shared besides the professional skill set that is also equally important one i am thankful to our own vice chancellor sir professor dr dilip uke sir exemplary academician not only in the country but across the borders as well and his eminence in various subjects that has proved and it has imbibed values in the students may it be in academics practice and many walks of the life that is very crucial because in a lord denning's court once a young lawyer who was arguing and time and again he was repeating that this is court of justice my lord it repeated for number of time and then lord denning stopped him and he corrected him by saying this is court of law my board my boy it is not court of justice every time you may not get justice but it is a court of law so what is the concept of justice and how those nuances can be understood under the able leadership of dr dilip uke sir you are really fortunate to have such exemplary academic leadership so we are thankful sir for your guidance and your mentorship lenin has said that practice and theory both the things are important because theory without practice is pointless but practice without theory is mindless so fine blend of practice and theory is important our registrar sir is having that blend so we are really thankful to you sir to have that blend i am thankful to our chancellor and chief justice of the country we are thankful to our pro vice chancellor chief justice of bombay high court all other patron judges all other members of the governing body executive council and all other management bodies i am also thankful to all the faculty members all the administrative staff because it is very well said that an individual can blow a whistle but it requires an orchestra to play a symphony so it was a joint work which was done by putting efforts for months together to have this grand success so i am thankful to all the persons who were involved in some or other responsibility for organizing this orientation day and i know i am a stumbling block between you and delicious lunch and on very first day i should not be accused of violation of your basic right to food so it is very well said it is better to stop when people ask why 
and not why not. Thank you very much. As we disperse, let us carry with us the spirit of unity, the thirst for knowledge, and the commitment to excellence that defines Maharashtra National Law University, Mumbai. We express our gratitude to all the guests, organizers, and attendees for making this event a remarkable success. Now let us all stand for the national anthem. मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा भिंज हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जलधि तरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मांगे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे Thank you for being part of this wonderful day. We can now proceed for lunch.